just for you to be aware. So I will be posting the video after we we have completed the, the review session. And I'm also going to uh, stop my video because sometimes my connection can get a little slow. So just let me turn off the video. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well. It's been a challenging week and hopefully uh, we are all doing better now. And I, sorry that we had to postpone our exam so many times. I kept sending you emails about the, the updates. Uh, and finally, uh, we got to, to the review today. So this is the, the exam review uh, for IE4355. And this is gonna be our first exam. And the exam is going to be on March the 2nd, on Tuesday, next week. And it's going to be with during the time period, the scheduled time for the, for the class. So it's gonna be from 5 to 6.20 p.m. You are going to access the exam uh, through Canvas. So you go online and you will uh, connect to the, the course uh, Canvas site and you will find a link in the modules. So if, as you do for, for the lectures, you will go to the modules and you will search for the date of the exam, March the 2nd. And in that module for March the 2nd, you will have a link to access the, the exam. Um, so the, the questions will be answered. Um, in the um, in the exam uh, online, and you you will have so as as we have here in the in the first slide, the the exam will have two sections. In the first section, you have ten multiple choice questions. So these ten questions are going to be answered online. You will click on the right answer, uh, and then you will submit the answer for those questions. And then section number two is uh, four problems. This could, I'm, the majority of them are going to be uh, math related problems, such as the ones that you have um, submitted for your homework. And I think one of those questions <clears throat> is gonna be in terms of you explaining a concept uh, from the lectures that we have covered so far. Uh, so this could be uh, to explain one of the concepts or to lead some examples uh, about a, a specific topic. So, so again, two sections. The exam is, is designed for you to uh, complete it within an hour. So you should have more than enough time uh, to complete the, the exam. And for the problems, and this is something that I'm going to mention again, uh, towards the end of the review. Uh, the problems, these are questions that you're gonna have to work on a sheet of paper, uh, like, like you do for the, for the homework, and then you're gonna have to upload your answer. So you can, um, as you've been doing for, for, the, for the assignments, you can take a picture and then upload the, the picture of your answer, or uh, you can scan it and uh, upload the file to, to your answer. Uh, what you will see is that for each question, you will have a, an option to upload a, an attachment. So for example, if you have four problems for question one or for problem one, you will have an, uh, a button to upload the file. For question two, you will have a button to upload a file. Uh, question three or problem three, you'll have another button to upload the file. So if you want to upload the, the files separately and you want to upload one file per question, you can do that. Or if you prefer to upload all the questions into a single file uh, and then upload all of them into one of the questions that I'm fine with that, I'm okay with that as well. So you, you can do either one. You can upload a single file for each one of the questions, or you can combine all the answers to the problems into a single file and then upload that file into one of the questions. So I just want you to know that you have the flexibility. Uh, I'm not gonna penalize you for that. 
So I see that we have a question. Let's see. Um, the question is, the, are you okay with us uh, using a tablet to complete the exam? Um, the, the exam again is going to be online. So it's, it's fine with me if you, if you want to use the tablet and then create a file and upload that file into the, the attachment, that's fine. Um, other than that, you, you will not have like a document to work on. So it's not like you're gonna have a PDF in which you can write on, a, on, on it. The questions, the statement of the questions are going to be within the exam. Um, so it's gonna be a statement like on, it's, it's, it's kind of a, like a web page type of, uh, of environment in which you're gonna see the statement and then you're gonna have a space to upload the, the answer. So I don't know if, I, if that answered your question, but if you, if you can, uh, with a tablet, you can write on, let's say on, on a slide in PowerPoint, you can answer the question and then upload that slide, that's fine. Good, so uh, the, the other question I have here is, uh, will the slides be on Canvas? So the, the exam is, is closed book, closed notes. So uh, I will, I will um, disable the, the modules during the exam. So you will not have access to the to the slides or to the assignments or anything like that. So the only module that you will see the day of the exam is the uh, the, the exam module. Uh, the review, yes, the review is going to be on Canvas. Yes, so if you go now to the modules, you will see the slides are posted there. And also I will upload the, re, the, the video. So right now I'm recording the, the videos, uh, the review session. So I will upload also the, the video after we are over and I have, I mean, it's gonna take me some time to, to, uh, uh, to get the file from the video and also to upload it. But by tonight you should have access to the video as well. Okay, so, um, so we covered the, the date, we covered the, the sections, two sections. Uh, section one will be 20 points. Uh, section two will be 80 points. Uh, so a total of 100 points for the first exam. And then the, the lectures that we, we discuss for this first part of the course are listed in, in, the, in the next part of the review. So we started the, the discussion with lecture one in which we cover product process and schedule design. Um, so there, there are multiple things, multiple concepts. We discuss the differences between product design, process design and schedule design. And we also introduce some of the concepts for facilities design. Um, in this lecture, we also look at uh, different uh, type of problems in which you were uh, one of those uh, were for you to uh, base on the uh, on the rate of defects, you were able to compute the amount of units that you needed to input into your process. So, uh, and we have one or one or two problems here in the in the review about that. Uh, so we'll see those in a minute. Uh, but you should be familiar, you should be, have a good understanding of how to solve those problems. So if I give you a, a, a uh, layout for uh, a set of machines and you have the inputs and, an, and the input flow and the output flow in terms of the arrows and you have the defect rates, you should be able to estimate the, the inputs that are needed for the process to complete the number of units that are expected. Um, then we moved into flow and activity relationship. So in this uh, second lecture, we talk about flow system, material flow system, uh, departmental planning, uh, layout types based on material flow and also activity relationships. Um, then lecture three was on layout planning models and design algorithms. Uh, so we discussed different type of basic layout types, uh, some layout procedures and algorithm approaches, including the, the craft algorithm. 
So in this last assignment, you, you have the multiple practice problems for uh, the different layout planning models and algorithms, layout procedures. So some of them rely more on the graphical aspect uh, and some of them are more into computations. Uh, so you should be familiar with both uh, types of approaches in terms of the, uh, the type of questions that you should expect uh, for, the, for the exam. And then the last part for this first exam was the manufacturing system. So in this one, this lecture is more in terms of concepts. So uh, fixed automation systems, flexible manufacturing systems, single stage multi-machine systems, and just in time manufacturing. So uh, for this type of, of, of material, these are, uh, this type of material can be uh, tested in terms of the multiple choice questions. So uh, you should be familiar with the differences between the different type of systems, uh, what is just in time, what is flexible manufacturing and so on. Those are topics that, that can be tested in, in the multiple choice questions. Um, so those are the four lectures that we, we cover as, as the first part of, the, of this course for the first part of this semester. Um, in terms of how to prepare for the exam, these are some, some things that you can do. First thing, uh, if you study the lectures very well and you study the problems that we cover in class and the labs and the homework, it should be uh, more than ready for the exam. So my advice for you is to go over the lectures, uh, go practice the labs, go practice the homework uh, problems, get familiar with those problems, have a good understanding that you feel comfortable uh, in terms of solving those problems on your own. If that's the case, then you should be able to do very well in the exam. Um, if you wanna go a step farther in terms of preparation, you can read chapters two, three, six from the fourth edition of our textbook. Uh, those are the chapters that were used uh, in, in terms of uh, developing the lectures that were covered uh, for the first part of the exam. And if you go to the syllabus, in the last page of the syllabus, you will see the specific sections that were used or, or they are related to the material that we cover in the, in the exam. I'm sorry, in the first part of this uh, course. Um, so those are my, my, that's my advice in terms of preparation. Uh, in terms of the instructions for the exam, the exam is closed book and notes. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, you will have a link to access the exam in Canvas. So if you go to the modules and you look for the March the 2nd uh, date, you'll find the, the, the exam inside that module or the link for the exam inside that module. Um, clearly show your work in all formulas using your solution. So this is for section number two. So if you, I mean, if, if if for any reason you end up with the wrong answer, if you show me the, the work and I can, uh, it's easy for me to find out where the problem is or where the error is. So please clearly show your work. Uh, it is for your benefit. I can give you or a partial credit if you can show me how you uh, work on the problem. So uh, this will help me in terms of awarding that full or partial credit. Um, as I mentioned already, multiple choice uh, true or false questions will be answered using the computer. So you're going to click on the right answer. And for the problems or the four questions for section number two, you will have to upload a file. So my advice, again, work the solution in, in a piece of paper or electronically. If you have a tablet, uh, save that file or take a picture, upload that solution or that file into the section or the button that will show you uh, for the attachment. And uh, one important thing to, to remember is that um, you have from, one, from 5 p.m. to 6.20 p.m. to work on the exam. And then I'll give you an extra 15 minutes for you to upload the files. 
So what that means is the exam link will close at 6.35 p.m. So make sure that you uh, plan accordingly, that you work on the exam, and by 6.20 p.m. you stop doing. If you haven't finished, you stop and you take the time to upload the files that you have ready. Um, so again, 15 minutes should be more than enough for you to uh, take a picture or scan the, the documents and upload those into your, your exam. Uh, so again, you should start working on the exam by 6.20. That's an hour and 20 minutes for you to work on the exam. And then from 6.20 to 6.35 p.m., you should have, uh, you should upload the materials or the, the files into Canvas. Um, so if you face any issues in terms of um, Canvas not letting you upload the file or anything like that, please, as soon as you finish the exam and you and you, and you try to upload those files and you are having problems with that, send me an email. Uh, if you face problems uploading the files, send me an email right away. So I'm aware of the problem and I will let you know what to do. Okay. Uh, that have it, that ha has happened just one or two times in, in my experience last semester. Uh, I know it can happen. We're working in, in, in a virtual environment. So don't, be, don't get scared. I mean, if you face issues uploading the files, send me an email and I'll let you know what to do. Um, so any questions up to this point? Okay, uh, good. No. Yes, thank you. Thank no, you. no questions. Okay, thank you. So what I have next, uh, what I decided to do just to give you a, a better idea of what to expect in the in the problems. I have some problems that are coming from the assignment, from the, from the homework, and that are representative in terms of what you should expect in the, in the exam. So uh, as I mentioned, these type of problems in which you have the defect rate and you have the, the expected output, like here, you have these expected output and then you have all these machines um, and you have this configuration and also you have the defect rates. And then using this information, you have to compute the input for this process. So how many units must be process uh, start within in order to meet the required output of 5,000 units? So I have the solution here, uh, and we have discussed this uh, in the in the lecture. Uh, but the way you you proceed with this is you have to understand the relationship between inputs and outputs, right? So this input three, and you know input three is going to be equal to output two plus output three. I'm sorry, output four. Um, and then you wait your work. You wait. You, you work your way uh, backwards, right? So uh, this is input four, uh, and you know input four is equal to um, the, the, the input of I2 or I2 times one minus the, uh, times the defect rate, which is D, D2. So this is I2 times D2. Um, and so on. So you 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 start working your uh, you start working on this problem backwards until you get to the the first station. Uh, and what I have here in terms of the solution is is that process of finding the the relationship between the stations, and then you solve. Um, at the end, you you set up an expression in terms of uh the the output and the input of one in which in this expression what you end up with is with uh parameters that you have the information right so in this case sorry in this last equation you see you know d1 you need you know d2 you know d3 you know d4 you know you know all three 
So if you solve for I1, you have all the information you need to solve the problem. Um, so this is one of those problems that have a rework station. So this is what we call a rework station. Um, so I think that's that could be one of the uh, challenges, uh, knowing know how to deal with uh, the rework. Uh, but again, if you if you understand the relationship between the inputs and the outputs, you can set up those equations easily. Um, and that's what you do here. In the next problem, this is one that we discuss in terms of the labs and, and there's a problem like this also in the lecture. Uh, so in this case, we have, um, instead of just one uh, input station, we have multiple input stations and you are asked to, to look at the inputs for station one or part A uh, for input for station three or part B and input for station five or part C. Um, so again, for this type of problem, what you would do if I were you, I would try to the, um, draw the picture first. So you, you understand what how the setup is uh, for the problem. And then using that picture, you can uh, work the problem backwards. Okay, so the question I have here for this problem is why is me multiplying by three? Um, so there's a part of the problem in which, uh, let me see if I can find it. Here we go, here. So right here it said three units of part B are needed for an assembly. So one unit of part A is assembled with three units of part B. So that's why you need to multiply by three uh, because in order to complete the assembly, you need uh, one part from A and three parts of B. problem. Okay, so good question. So the the next type of problem you, that you should be familiar with is with this um, type of problem in which you are asked to um, find out if you can split your, your layout into multiple cells. Uh, so in this particular case, you have uh, data for a local wood manufacturer that wants to decrease material handling by changing uh, from a process layout to a GT layout. Uh, so creating these cells, it is considering installing a conveyor for intracellular movement of parts, which is to restrict intercellular movement, intracellular movement, the machine part. Um, sorry, my internet is slow. Okay, I'm back. So the machine part matrix for the wood manufacturer is shown below, and you're asked to use the direct clustering algorithm to form the cells. And if conflict exists, propose an alternative approach for resolving the conflicts. So in this case, we have the machines. So we always put the machines at the top and we have the parts uh, in, the, as in, in the vertical. Um, and the machines in the horizontal uh, or in the rows. So the first thing you do is you, you have to do the sorting, right? So we, we, we do the summation for the uh, rows and columns and, and we do the sorting. Okay, so we start with um, right here. Let me see if I can uh, show you. So this is the summation for uh, columns and rows. Um, so in this first tableau or table, you have the sorting in terms of the, the rows. As you can see, there's, there's multiple ties here because most of these rows add to 
it, or the, the summation equals two. So in order for you to break the tie, what you need to do is you have to look at the number of the, of the part. And for those ties, you put the highest number first. So you see, you go with A, seven, six, four, three, two, and one. Because eight is higher than seven, so you put it first and so on. Uh, and the last one is five because the summation equals one. Um, and for the, so in this case right here, this part is not sorted yet. So we do the sorting here. So this is two, 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 three, and four. So in this tableau here, we have uh, the sorting for both the, the columns and the rows. So after, um, after you do the sorting now is when you start doing the, the movements uh, for the columns first and then for the rows. So for, for the columns, you start with the, uh, with the first row and you see that you have a three uh, with a one here. So three has to move to be moved to the first column. And then you have a one here for six. So six is going to be moved to the second column. And at that point, the, uh, those two columns are gonna be fixed. Okay, so three and six are, are fixed. Now we move to the second row, right? So second row right here. And we look at four has a one. So four is gonna be next. And then two has a one. So two is gonna be next. So four and two are gonna be fixed at that point. Um, so now we move to the third row. Um, in the third row, we have five with a one. So five is gonna be next. And then we have um, six is already played. So the only one that is missing is one. Okay, so that's how you sort for uh, the columns. So in this table right here, we have sorted the columns. What's missing now is the sorting of the uh, rows. Okay, so for the rows now, we're gonna go column by column. So if you look at this first column, you have a one in the first row already. And so eight is gonna be fixed. And then you have another one here. So this one will move to the second row. So that's why we have three second. Um, so with the first column, we're done. Now we move to the next one, uh, which is the second column. And in this second column, we have a one here or six. So six is gonna be next. Um, three is already up. And then the next one is one. So one is gonna be next. And then we move to the next column. We have a one here for seven. So seven is gonna be next. And then we have a one for two. So two is gonna be next. And then in this column, we have seven and we have four. So four is gonna be next. And then the last one is five. So at that point, we are done. Um, we are done with the algorithm. The only thing that is missing is for you to see if there's any way for you to split this to, uh, into two cells, two separate cells. And the answer is yes. Uh, you can have, um, sorry, let me write, uh, this is three, six, four, two, five, one. So you can have a cell with machines three, six and five, and you can have another cell which machines four, two, and one. And that's the answer for your, for your question. Okay. Any questions about this one? Good. 
So the last problem is on the craft method. So on this one, this is part of the, uh, this is the question, the last question of assignment number three. So in this one, you are asked to, uh, to look at the information that is given. Um, so in here we have five departments and each of this department has some information. So we have the flow between the departments. We have the unit cost for the flow. So for example, from A to C, you have a flow of five units and it costs you $1 per unit to move those five units from A to C. And also we had the distance. So the distance is 20. So that's the distance between A and C. So if you were to compute the cost of moving, of moving those five units between A and C, that would be five times one, times 20. The same thing for AE. So if you, if you wanna move eight, five units from A to E, it's gonna cost you $1 per unit and the distance is 11. So the cost for moving from A to E is gonna be the five units times the cost times the distance. Okay, so you, you understand that. So this, so using this information, we can compute the cost associated with the uh, flow of material with the current layout. Um, so the question is asking you if, if you replace or if you switch these two departments, A and E, it's asking you to estimate the cost of, those, of that switch or that um, exchange. Okay, so, but before we get into computing that, um, the first part of the question is, is asking you if, if you were to implement craft two-way exchange procedure, indicate all the department's pairs that craft will consider exchanging in the above layout. So to answer this question, you have to remember what we discussed in, in class, that there's two conditions uh, for, um, for classifying as possible two-way exchange. The first condition is that these uh, two departments are sharing one wall. Okay, so if you look at this layout, current layout, I can say that A and B are sharing a wall. So I can consider this for a possible two-way exchange. B and C is also uh, sharing a wall, so B and C can be considered for an exchange. E and C is also sharing a wall, so they can be considering, they can be considered for an exchange. Um, a and E as well, D and E. Okay, so those are easy to identify. You just look at whether or not they're sharing a wall. If they share a wall, they can be considered for a possible two-way exchange. The other condition is you have to look at the area. So if two departments have the same area, and they are located in the, and, and they are not located or they are not sharing a wall, they can still be considered uh, as a possible exchange. So for example, B and D, they are not located next to each other. They are not sharing a wall, but since they have a, the same area, they can be considered for a possible exchange. Okay, so the answer for this question is the following. The departments, uh, exchanging department pairs are AB, AB are sharing a wall, AE are sharing a wall, BC are sharing a wall, BD, they have the same area, so they can be considered for an exchange. CE are sharing a wall and DE are sharing a wall. So those are the possible exchanges that you can consider. The second question is asking you to compute the estimated cost of exchanging departments A and E. Okay, so if you look at this table that I generated here, I can close, uh, increase the size of this. Um, okay, so what I have, I want to, you to pay attention to these three columns right here. This is information that is coming from these tables. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is the information that I have available to compute the cost associated with the flow in this layout. Uh, so for example, if I look at this pair, A and C, 
uh, I can look at the table. I want to change the color, but it's not letting me. Uh, let me see if I can change. Okay, here we go. So A and C. Okay, so I want to know what the flow is between A and C. That flow is five. The cost is one. And distance is 20. Okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping A, B. Okay, the reason I'm skipping A, B is because there's no flow between them. Okay, so it's not going to impact my cost. So I went straight to AC, right? So if you have no flow, you don't have to consider that as uh, for the cost. Okay, so that's why AD is not there, AD is not there. Um, uh, BE is not there and CE is not there because they have uh, zero cost, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so, so I have that information. If I do AE is the same thing. So if I look at AE, the flow is five, the cost is one, and the distance is 11, okay? And if you follow the B, C, B, D, C, D, and D, the, the same information is coming from, from these three tables for those uh, combinations. Okay, but the question is asking me, what would be the cost if I replace or if I swap A and E? So basically, what we are saying is that A and E, A is gonna become E and E is gonna be switched to A. Um, so the algorithm, uh, basically what it does is it assumes that if A is moved to the location of E, A is going to preserve the same centroid as E and E is gonna preserve the same centroid as A. Okay, so when you swap them, the centroids are not gonna change. The only thing that's gonna change is the name of the department, uh, even though they have different shapes and um, possibly different areas. So under that assumption, this, the, the reason we made that assumption is because it, it makes things easier for us to, to analyze. Um, so essentially what's happening is A is going to replace E and E is gonna replace A. So if I look at this originally, this was the, the pair that we have listed uh, to compute our initial cost. Now what I'm saying is A is no longer located where it, where it is. E is taking the place of A. So that first distance that I have computed here that is coming from the table is no longer the distance between A and C, is now the distance between E and C. If you look at the, um, the distance between C and E, that will be eight. So that's why eight is listed as the new distance. Okay, so now this is the distance between E and C, or that information is coming between uh, from here, where it originally was the distance between uh, E and C. Okay, if you look at the next one, this is A and E, since E is replacing A and A is replacing E, that distance is not gonna change. This distance, so that's why it is 11. B and C, since there's no A and no E there, the distance is gonna be the same. B and D, there's no E or no A, so distance is the same. C and D, there's no A, no E, so the distance is the same. But we get to the last one, D, E, now this is D, A or AD. So I go back to my, my table and I'm going to look for the distance between um, AD and that distance is 18. So that's why this is 18 right here. 
Okay, so, so what happened is by swapping these two departments, the distance that belong to A are now the distances for E and the distance that belong to E are now the distances for A. Uh, and those are uh, what's reported now in terms of these distances. And if you want to compute the cost, now the expression is gonna be the summation of all F times C times D. So in this case, that would be five times one times eight plus five times one times 11 plus six times one times 12 plus two times four times 22 uh, plus three times three times 10 plus seven times one times 18. And that should be equal to 559 units. Any questions? Um, the lecture, it had like a, a part where um, it updated the centroids after switching them, but do we need to do that or do we just keep the um, so, switch centroids as is? That's a, that's a good question. So what, what would happen is after this step, if, if you observe that there's some savings, uh, let's say, for example, the original cost was 570, and you did this, this, you did the swap, and you compute the new cost, and it's 559. You say, okay, this is a good exchange, so I'm going to keep it. So after you have found that this is a good exchange, now you have to update the centroids. Yes. Does that answer the question? And then. For irregular shapes like E, how do you find the centroid? Is there like a set way or? For, yes, so that's that's a good question. So for this, um, you're gonna have to refer to the uh, mechanics of materials uh, concepts. Um, so I'm not gonna be asking you to do that in the exam. Uh, I'm not going to give you any weird shape, uh, but if you needed to do it in in, um, in a practical uh, problem, then yeah, there's some methods, some strategies uh, that you you can use to find those centroids. Okay, and then I have another question. Yes. Is there going to be um, finding the block layout with the graph face method? Um, those are possible questions, uh, but. I mean, you say like the problems that we had in the homework, the last homework, in yeah. which you have to create the 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 uh, let's say the graph, and then based on the graph you create the layout. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So those are possible questions, um, but basically what I'm trying to say with the review is that those are less likely because I'm, I'm giving you in the review the uh, type of question that you should expect. Okay. Okay. Uh, but for that one, is there a set way that the block layout should look or like- the, the, That's a good question. That's a very good question. So um, essentially what you wanna see once you create the graph is for those arcs that you have a high weight, let's say um, the largest number between two departments is in arc A and that number is 10. You wanna make sure that when you draw the block diagram that those two departments are sharing a wall. Okay, okay so that's, that's the most important part. When you do the transition from the graph to the, to the block diagram is that those departments that are showing a weight, a high weight between arcs or in their arcs, 
you want to make sure that those are located next to each other. Okay. Yes, no problem. Any other question? When you're calculating for this 6.28B, um, is it okay just to not, like what's to prevent us from not calculating the departments and the costs that don't change? Like, could we just consider AC and that's a good e That's a good question. Uh, yes, yeah, since those are not gonna be changing, um, the, I mean, if you're comparing against two, uh, uh, if you have a benchmark cost and you are comparing against that benchmark, benchmark cost, uh, you, you, I mean, if you subtract that, uh, it's gonna be a little bit more uh, difficult, I guess. You have to do some extra work. Uh, but the answer is yes. I mean, if you, if you only compute the cost of the, the ones that are changing, and you can make your decision based on that, I think that's that's a possible way to do it. Yes. Uh, but I, I think it's, gonna, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I wanted to make sure my thought process was right. To yes. Cut down a little bit on the summation and all that. We knew yes. certain departments weren't changing from one to the other. Yeah, so again, if you look at the, you would have to compute the cost for the original, I guess. This, you're gonna compute this plus this, and then you're gonna compare against these times this, I guess. Correct, yeah. Yes, yeah, that, that's correct. You can do that, yes. Any other question? Good, so as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to post uh, the recording. And if you have any other questions, I'm gonna be available tomorrow and on Monday and on Tuesday uh, doing office hours. So feel free to send me an email. And if you need to talk to me, we can set up an appointment. Okay, don't be scared. If you have any questions, just send me an email and I will get back to you. If I can answer the question via email, I'll do the, I will do that. If I understand that we need to uh, have a one-on-one -on -one discussion, then we can set up an appointment. Okay, so um, if there's no other question, then thank you for your time and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.